Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this side event of the 76th uh, UN General Assembly. Uh, we will soon open the session. I'm just giving a couple of minutes for participants to and our attendees to be able to join uh, the session. I see the numbers are um, jumping as I see participants are able to connect. Uh, this session is organized by UNCDF and its inclusive digital economy team. My name is Karima Wardak. I am the knowledge management and the communication lead for that team at UNCDF. And I will co-host this session today with my colleague Francois Coupien, who will facilitate the fireset chat. Um, in this event, we'll be discussing the inclusive digital economy scorecard, a new tool for policymaker that helps to set priorities for a digital transformation. This session has uh, interpretation available in French and in English. Uh, you can actually access it uh, through uh, the, the button that you should see at the bottom of your screen. The button looks like this, so you can switch it on and off as you wish and access then the interpretation in French or in English. The session will be bilingual. Some sections will be only in English and other parts will be a mix of French and English. Please also use the Q&A button for any of the questions you might have as a result of the discussion we will be holding today. Um, today's agenda is organized in four sections. We'll start with uh, opening remarks um, and that will be followed by an introduction to the inclusive digital economy scorecard. Um, then we'll go into a fireside chat with two uh, guests of honor who have uh, obliging us with their presence today. And we will have closing remarks just after a section where we will answer any questions you might have. So without further ado, um, I would like to uh, start with the opening remarks uh, by our UNDP administrator who will be followed by our Executive Secretary General, Priti Sinha, and uh, the Ministry of Information and Communication of Nepal. With that, let's start. Executive Secretary of the United Nations Capital Development Fund, my colleague and dear friend, Priti Sinha, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. It is a privilege to join the launch of the Inclusive Digital Economy Scorecard, or IDES. It is a new performance and policy tool that will help developing countries to better monitor and understand their ongoing digital economy transformation. And tools like these are needed more than ever as entire countries are at risk of being left behind in this rapid period of change. In many ways, the digital divide made worse by the COVID-19 crisis is the new face of inequality. Therefore, we must not only keep up with the digital transformation, we actually must seek to get ahead of the curve. In this respect, IDES is generating key data and analytics that can help governments to set priorities for a country's digital economy transformation. It is already being used in Uganda, the Solomon Islands and Burkina Faso. It is helping to identify key market constraints to digital inclusiveness. For instance, many people living at the last mile either distrust or unfamiliar with digital services and payments. Yet the immense power of digital finance was highlighted as COVID-19 struck. At UNDP, we are committed to helping governments across the world to leverage digital finance to support life-saving electronic cash transfer programs. And this has benefited some 2 million people since the pandemic hit through these activities that we were able to assist. Indeed, the scorecard will complement other key efforts such as the UNDP, UNCDF joint offer on digital financing for the SDGs. Crucially, the inclusive digital economy scorecard will identify ways to boost the inclusion of women and young people in the digital economy. That will involve expanding on efforts already underway. In Nepal, for instance, the United Nations is helping informal workers, migrants and women's cooperatives to acquire new digital skills or look to Cambodia, where UNDP is supporting the development of a new e-commerce ecosystem 
while helping thousands of small medium scale enterprises to do business online for the first time. And we know that digital technology holds enormous potential to expand choice and opportunity. Extending internet access in Africa, Latin America and Southeast Asia, for example, could increase incomes by up to $600 per person a year. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't measure it, you probably can't improve it, is a philosophy that continues to resonate. In this respect, tools like IDs allow us to gain a better understanding of how the digital divide is affecting certain countries and within them, certain communities. And I believe that it will inspire new actions by the United Nations and our partners across the globe to end inequalities like the digital gender divide. To our colleagues and friends at the United Nations Capital Development Fund, thank you for your efforts as always. We look forward to putting the new data and insights generated by the scorecard into action to realize even better results for the communities that we serve together. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator Akim Steiner. It's now my honor to give executive. the floor to our Executive uh, Secretary, Rudy Sina. Thank you. Thank you, Karima. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first start by thanking the UNDP Administrator, Akim Steiner, from whom you just heard about his words in support of the Inclusive Digital Economy Scorecard, the IDIS. His words mean a lot to the team that has worked on this. As the Administrator mentioned, the IDIS is a new policy tool that is helping the least developed countries in particular, the LDCs, to set their priorities for the development of their digital economies. I'm going to join him and all the colleagues here in adding my words on this topic. The IDIS is an essential tool to understand where the financing gaps might be so that governments can funnel the right financing for digital transformation particularly when it comes to infrastructure and the need for innovative and inclusive solutions. The importance of IDIS is rooted in the fact that the technologies are offering new tools to address global challenges and possess the potential to be a source of great inclusion. We feel that using IDIS will help the attainment of the SDGs, particularly in the world's 46 least developed countries or the LDCs. To the point, about 51% of people who could use the internet, in fact, do not use the internet, according to the LDC Connectivity Report, recently launched by the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth. This proves that we need tools that can help us analyze the wealth of data that comes with technology. We need tools to set the right priorities for the public sector. And we need tools that will ensure no one is excluded from the fourth industrial revolution. In the process of supporting and advancing digital economies that are truly inclusive. The IDIS with its building blocks, which my colleague Francois will introduce in a couple of minutes, identifies the constraints to digital inclusiveness in given markets. By providing this visibility, the IDIS allows policymakers to make decisions that can bring more trust to digital services while developing the right digital skills of individuals and communities in countries. To develop the scorecard, the team in 2020 partnered with like-minded organizations and a reference group that included the European Commission, GSMA, UNCTAD, UNDESA, and UNDP. Each organization provided their experts and their own specific data sets that informed the scorecard, such that the connectivity index published by GSMA and the Human Development Index from UNDP. Such data feeds into the IDES. And we collect data from each country as well to make sure that the scorecard is robust and inclusive. The objective of the reference group is to refine the scorecard and its indicators, and more broadly, drive the agenda of measuring the inclusiveness of digital economies. We are very pleased four countries agreed to pilot the scorecard with the reference group. 
These are Burkina Faso, Nepal, Solomon Islands, and Uganda. And I was privileged to launch the IDIS alongside the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, the NIFS, for the Solomon Islands, which Prime Minister Honorable Manasev Sogavri earlier this year. Today, you will hear from our government counterparts in Burkina Faso, Nepal, Solomon Islands, and Uganda. You will see how this tool is helping them set their priorities to ensure that their digital transformation are also inclusive transformation. In conclusion, it is my pleasure to launch the IDIS interactive map that showcases the digital inclusiveness scores of 25 countries. You should soon be able to see that screen on the homepage of our new mini site, which will allow you to go into details of the scores. I hope you will find the IDIS inspiring and useful in developing digital economies in your countries that leave no one behind. Thank you so much for your partnership, your engagement, and looking forward to continuing this journey with you. With that, over to you, Karima. Thank you, your executive secretary. Um, I'm just having a slight technical problem sharing my, uh, my screen. So I'm just going to try again and see if it's working. Yes, it is working. And with that, uh, thank you again for your words. And I would like to share the screen uh, that shows you the interactive map that we're currently launching today. And uh, before we move to now the words of Mr. Anil Dutta, Joint Secretary of Ministry of Communication and Information and Technology of Nepal, who recorded a message about the EDES for the launch of this event and the opening remarks. Your CDF had proposed collaboration with our ministry on inclusive digital economy scorecard in June 2020. Our ministry, the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, had adopted Digital Nepal framework in late 2019. So we found UNCDF's proposal very much aligned with what we envision for digital development in country through the Digital Nepal framework. Our framework is a comprehensive document covering eight sectors and 80 digital initiatives in those sectors. UNCDF's IDES is a very good diagnostic tool, which gives a snapshot of a state of digital economy measured in four categories. We have found these categories very much relevant and particularly measuring inclusiveness within these categories very useful to reflect upon our interventions so that we leave no one behind as we progress on creating digital economy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Anil Dutta. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to my co-host today, Francois Coupien, um, the global digital lead uh, for, um, for our team at UNCDF. So with that, Francois, over to you to introduce the EDES. So thank, thank you, Kavima. So thank you, Mr. Anil Dutta, I think for explaining the relevance of IDES uh, for the government of Nepal. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm really happy to see so many participants, I think, to this event. And I would like to thank all of you, I think, for your interest of IDES. I think it's a great day. My objective now in the five coming minutes is just to give you a snapshot, an overview of the website. And, and so the way I would do it is just go lead through you through the homepage, and then we'll do a deep dive in two countries, Solomon Island and Burkina Faso, because I think that the two countries that will be also be represented in the fireside chat in 10 minutes. So what you see, I think that's the home page. So the home page where you see, you see, I think we will give you access to 24 country cards with key codes, with key score on IDE. And four new countries are also under development for Gabon, Gambia, Fiji, and Namibia. So if you see on the left on the, on the screen, you will be able to, to see, let's say, to have more information about the scorecard, about the methodology behind the scorecard and the different indicators, and also the different market development stage. Then you have this country selection panel. And so if you go to country, you will be able to see the list of 24 countries that are currently, let's say, in the, in the, in the solution. And you can select the country to have, let's say, a, a deeper dive. 
So you'll see also on the right side that there are several years. So IDES is a exercise that we'll be doing on a yearly basis, really to be able to work with the government of the different countries in helping them in the digital transformation and setting really the right priorities. And I think I heard that we have in the assistance, I think a lot of different government agencies from different countries, because the website and IDES, it's really a tool to engage the conversation at country level. And so, for example, I know that for Ethiopia, we have the Ministry of Innovation and Technology and the Digital Transformation Directorate. We have the Ministry of ICT of Rwanda, Economic Planning Unit for Malaysia, and a lot of representatives from other countries. So maybe let's do a deep dive when we select a country so we can go to maybe for, some, for Burkina Faso, so we can go to the next slide. And so you see the data that you will see, let's say, at country level. And so maybe, can we, yes. So for each country, you will have, I say, such a snapshot of the data of, uh, on IDES. So let me explain the content of each page. And I think there are two main parts of the page. You have the left side under the 43%, which is providing the digital economy score. And the digital economy score, it's really the, the level of development of the digital economy in the country. And so it's, a, it's on, a, on a range of 0 to 100%. So we consider that Burkina Faso as a, as a score of 43% out of 100. And the way it's calculated this score, it's an aggregation of four building blocks that were mentioned by uh, Priti Singer. And the point is that we have policy regulation, infrastructures, including digital ID, connectivity, ICT usage, digital payment, then innovation and skills. And so in order to be able to come to this subcomponents, and I think the score for this subcomponents there is a list of about, let's say, 80 indicators where we are collecting data at global and country level. And so you can find the list of this, I think, this data point when you are going under the methodology under the website. So let me now go on the left side, on the, on the right side of the, um, of, the, uh, of the country cards. So where you have digital inclusiveness. I think that's I think one of the key aspects also of the card. We just we do not want just to measure the digital economy development, but just make sure that it's inclusive of some margin of the margin, marginalized segments we are care, we are we are carrying out. And so we we focus on rural, women, youth, elderly, refugee, migrant, disabled, and MSMEs. And so the score of 38% is an aggregation. And so it shows how the public and private sectors and what type of effort they put in place in order to make sure that these segments are, let's say, included in the digital economy. And so with a score of 38%, we see that there is still a lot of room, as it is for a lot of country, just to make sure that these segments are the, are, are the center of the discussion and at the center of the development of the digital economy. We have also a particular focus on 49%. 49% is the score for gender, because we are mainstreaming gender in all what we do. Just at the bottom of the screen, so you see Really, as I said, the objective is really a tool to engage at the country level. So we just would like to make sure that all stakeholders that are willing to be involved in this um, about IDES and really support the government of Burkina Faso can contact, let's say, Janine Watara. Janine Watara is on country lead in Burkina Faso to be able to keep the discussion at country level in, involved, let's say, with the government and making sure we can really leverage and maybe find a synergy between the different stakeholders. Also, we see, let's say, IDES has been adopted by the government of Burkina Faso. You will see, I think, three types of level of involvement with the government uh, in the different page. We have some countries where we have just been collecting the data, not been shared with the government yet. The second part is, so it will be that you can go to, uh, I think the, there has been shared with the government and, it's, and the, we are working with the government in reviewing the data. And a country like Burkina Faso, I think the data and the score IDES has been adopted by the government and they're using it, let's say, in the digital transformation. So we can go to Solomon Island. The next slide, just maybe to see, let's say, the same time of information. Maybe what I would like to highlight for conversation, let's say, later, later in, in, some, in some minutes, is concerning, let's say, what is really interesting in Solomon Island, that there had just been, I think we say, the landing of the sea cable some years ago. 
And so there is a major focus of active promotion of the government on digital transformation. That's where you see this score of 73%. But you see there is still a lot of room in terms of policy and regulation in order to be able to, to develop that. And we'll be discussing that, let's say, during the fireside chat. Also, one key aspect concerning the inclusiveness. Again, I think a score with a score of 50 on digital inclusiveness, there is still a lot of room for the public and private sectors to focus on marginalized segments. Uh, but what is really interesting is that the 78%, that is quite, I'd say, a really good score. And so we would like to learn from Solomon Island how they've been able to, let's say, better include gender in the digital, let's say, strategy. So before closing, I think, this section, maybe I would like to show, to give two main general principles of IDES. First, we do not consider, let's say, low or high score for IDES. It's really a tool. To, it's a self, a self, sorry, it's a self, self assessment of each con country digital transformation, and our objective is to work with the, the, I think, the government of this country that they can use this tool to help them understand their strength and weaknesses and highlight some of the gaps, so that can, they can really say focus on some of the gap and take, let's say, the right priorities. And we'll be discussing that during the, the second part. Also, the second principle is that IDES it is not a tool to compare countries. Okay, and so that's why also you see the website, the way it's designed, it's really, as I say, to bring the conversation at country level, because we would like this to be, I think, a tool for the government to be able to drive the digital transformation and to do, let's say, an assessment of where they are to be able to focus on the right area. So let me close the presentation here. And as a conclusion, what I would like, I would like to also, we would like to hear from the ministry the Minister of Finance and Treasury of Solomon Island, Mr. Ari Kuma, about IDES and some policy change in the country. Thank you. The IDES highlighted key enablers that needs to be fostered uh, to enable the growth of the digital economy. Already the government is working on fostering key enablers. Amongst others is the National Payment System Bill, which has important link to improving government revenue through digitization in the Ministry of Finance and Treasury. At the broader level, this will establish an inclusive national payment system, which will improve the soundness of the payment system. These are great accelerators for citizen entry and as well as uh, enables meaningful participation of the citizens in the digital economy. Thank you. So um, now, thank you, Mr. Ari Kuma, Minister of Finance and Treasury from Solomon Island uh, for these short words. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the Fireset Chat, uh, where you will recognize the actual title of this session, which is Setting Priorities for an Inclusive Digital Transformation in LDCs. And for that, we are honored uh, to have with us today um, the Minister of uh, Digital Economy, Posts and Digital Transformation of Burkina Faso, Madame Adja Fatimata Ouattarasano, and with her, um, Sanjay Shah, Digital Advisor to the Central Bank of Solomon Island. So with that, uh, and with Francois Coupien, who will facilitate this session, I'd like to invite Sanjay Shah and the Minister, Madame Adja Fatimata Wadaha Sanu, to switch on their cameras so that we can start the fireset chat. Hello, Sanjay, and maybe unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, Karima. Bonjour, Madame la Ministre. Bienvenue. Oui. Bonjour. Merci. Bonjour. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Merci. Je vais donc passer la parole maintenant à François Coupien, qui va commencer et qui va commencer donc avec vous, Madame la Ministre. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Camille. Madame la Ministre, c'est un plaisir de vous avoir parmi nous pour cet événement important, le lancement officiel de IDES dans plus de 20 pays. Et je veux vraiment en fait vous, vous, en fait vous remercier aussi, car le Burkina Faso a été vraiment un précurseur sur IDES. Et parmi en fait les quatre 
pilote, pays pilote pour tester et adopter IDES. Et je pense que c'est même le, pays, le premier pays francophone en fait, qui a lancé IDES. Et nous avons le premier pays anglophone qui est Salomon Island dans ce panel. Donc, je pense que ça va être très riche en discussion aujourd'hui sur le panel. Et l'objectif, c'est vraiment de voir un petit peu comment les gouvernements des pays avec lesquels nous faisons des partenariats peuvent utiliser IDES ou utilisent IDES pour pouvoir en fait planifier et mettre les bonnes priorités en fait concernant les, la transformation digitale dans leur pays. Donc, j'ai une première question pour vous, Madame la Ministre, qui est, on voit bien en fait l'ensemble des, des agences gouvernementales qui sont autour de la table se rendre compte que la transformation digitale est un grand chantier qui couvre en fait énormément en fait d'agences gouvernementales, énormément de différents secteurs, agriculture, éducation, santé, finance, les femmes, les jeunes. Donc, on voulait un petit peu, on aurait bien voulu avoir votre expérience concernant comment l'IDES vous a permis en fait de redéfinir certaines de vos priorités au point de vue du gouvernement du Burkina Faso et quelles sont en fait ses principales priorités que vous avez pour les mois et les années à venir. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Alors, je, je, suis, je suis très honorée euh, d'avoir été associée à cette importante activité et mon pays est vraiment honoré d'avoir euh, été euh, un des pays pilotes à se prêter à, à l'exercice et nous avons vraiment accueilli avec beaucoup d'enthousiasme et euh, euh, beaucoup de bonheur. Et je dois dire que euh, l'IDES est un, un élément euh, extrêmement important. Et vous savez, dès que euh, on a commencé l'exercice le, le, en 2020, et déjà dès décembre, on avait les premiers euh, résultats. Et à la faveur donc euh, du nouveau gouvernement, il y a eu déjà euh, le renforcement de la volonté politique et la dénomination du ministère de l'économie numérique a changé. Nous avons ajouté la dimension transformation digitale pour vraiment impulser le développement en utilisant donc les technologies de l'information et de la communication. Le constat est que euh, notre pays, nous devons renforcer l'infrastructure de base et l'IDES l'a relevé et c'est vrai que euh, dans nos référentiels et tous les schémas d'aménagement numérique, nous avions déjà compris qu'il fallait rapidement accélérer la construction d'infrastructures. L'IDS est venue encore nous orienter dans ce sens et ce qu'on nous a fait, c'est vraiment accélérer la pose de la fibre optique. Et aujourd'hui, je suis heureuse de dire que nous allons vers l'exploitation de la fibre optique construite par l'État. C'est vrai, vous savez que les télécommunications, c'est un secteur libéralisé. Donc, euh, le, nos États donnent des licences à des opérateurs privés qui construisent des infrastructures. Mais pour faire en sorte que l'inclusion numérique soit rapidement une réalité, l'État lui-même se met aux côtés des opérateurs pour euh, la construction d'infrastructures et faire en sorte que rapidement un maximum d'habitants puissent avoir accès à ces technologies. Ensuite, ce que nous avons fait, c'est vraiment utiliser le fonds du service universel pour améliorer la couverture donc, euh, réseau, la couverture réseau du territoire. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes en train de, de, de finaliser la couverture de 180 localités et ça va améliorer l'accessibilité au numérique donc, des populations. Nous avons renforcé aussi la réalisation des plateformes à travers le projet e-Burkina et nous mettons un accent particulier sur le monde rural. Parce que le Burkina a à peu près 80% de, de la population qui s'adonne donc à l'agriculture, à l'élevage et tout. Et donc, nous avons mis un accent particulier sur le monde rural dans le cadre du projet e-Burkina. C'est des plateformes voilà, pour leur permettre déjà d'être renseignés, d'être informés et en tout cas de pouvoir utiliser le, le numérique dans les activités de tous les jours. Nous sommes un pays enclavé. Ce que nous avons fait, nous avons renforcé, euh, nous avons construit deux infrastructures majeures, c'est-à-dire le point d'atterrissement virtuel pour diminuer le coût d'accès à l'Internet. Donc, l'État a investi dans ces équipements, dans, dans ces infrastructures stratégiques pour aider donc les opérateurs qui s'approvisionnent localement sur place avec la bande passante et pouvoir redistribuer moins cher donc aux, aux, aux 
population. Donc, c'est dit que l'IDS, nous, en fait, a renforcé dans notre vision de euh, la construction rapide d'infrastructures et de l'élaboration de services adaptés aux populations de base. Et aujourd'hui, dans tous les secteurs euh, d'activité, que ce soit la santé, on, cessait, on essaie d'améliorer les soins de santé à travers la téléconsultation parce que nous n'avons pas des spécialistes dans toutes les localités. Donc, avec la téléconsultation, les spécialistes qui sont dans les grandes villes arrivent donc à appuyer les centres de santé secondaire dans les villes les plus, les plus reculées. Donc, voilà en fait euh, ce qui s'est fait. En tout cas, c'est encore dire que euh, l'IDES, euh, nous, nous, nous avons euh, accueilli favorablement et c'est un outil important pour nous, du moins que nous avons mis un comité de suivi le suivi donc, des recommandations donc, de l'IDS et ça nous permet aujourd'hui euh, d'avancer euh, sereinement et d'avancer sur une base en tout cas éclairée de chiffres qui sont réels et qui sont euh, produits par une entité autre que le gouvernement. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Ministre. Et je pense que vous avez eu quand même les points importants. Vous parliez en fait justement de mettre en place l'infrastructure de base, vous avez fait la connectivité qui en fait évoque beaucoup d'expériences en fait, qu'on va retrouver évidemment dans l'ensemble des pays. Donc je reviendrai vers vous après, qu'on va parler un petit peu plus d'inclusion, mais je, maintenant, laissez-moi aller, je vais switcher en fait en anglais. I will go back in English because I would like to, to ask, maybe to follow up on this point with uh, Sanjay, with the digital advisor to the Swanton Bank of Solomon Islands. So th uh, Sanjay, thanks for participating in this event. I think also Solomon Island has been a, a pioneer market also in the adoption of IDES. And I think the government has been able really to use it and really to be able to, to start thinking about new policies, let's say about new activities and some priorities. So I think what I was mentioning when I was presenting the, the part concerning the, uh, the, 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 the country card for Solomon Island, I think what was, what was really interesting is from the policy side. So we see that there is a really quite active promotion from the government But we see that maybe there is a lot of room for improvement concerning the development of the right policies and regulation. So we would be keen to know, let's say, can, if you can explain a little bit, let's say, this, this situation in uh, Solomon Island and what has been also the role of IDES in, in setting the right priorities on these topics. So please, thank, Sanjay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Francois. Uh, also uh, to my uh, fellow panelists, uh, Excellency, Madame. Uh, Hajja Fatimata, uh, and good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are in the world. First of all, I also wanted to extend our greetings from the governor, Dr. Luke Farao, and uh, personal secretary, uh, permanent secretary Moses, permanent secretary Riley, and permanent secretary Dentana from the Ministry of Finance, uh, because they couldn't participate because so late in, in Solomon's. But uh, our experiences have been very Uh, unique and we were very honored to be part of the first pilot countries to conduct the IDES scorecard. The point that you mentioned, uh, before I get into the specific answer about it, you highlighted this part, but I just wanted to relate as an information to everybody else listening. There's nothing about a high score or a low score. And as pointed out by a UNDP administrator, if you don't measure, you don't know where you are. And it's important to know where you are so that you can correct and you can implement the correct actions that is required within your policy, your strategy. Uh, the gaps that you mentioned, uh, talking is different from doing. And actually, IDES played a very important role in pointing out certain gaps that existed where the promotion of, uh, of going into this digital transformation was very high in Solomon Islands, but specific policies and strategies were missing. And as a result of that, now you can see key strategies are being implemented in the country. I'll give you an example. The National Financial Inclusion Strategy that was launched by the Executive Secretary together with the Prime Minister of the country uh, does focus, the National Financial Inclusion Strategy focuses very heavily on the digital aspects to plug the gaps that exist in financial inclusion. The other element is the uh, recent formation of the digital transformation uh, authority that has been formed because, because the government realized that to bring together this whole uh, vast elements of different uh, 
ministries that need to come together to realize the digital transformation of the country is very, very critical. The other uh, key strategy that is currently under development with uh, working together with UNTAR and the UNCDF is the National Digital Economy Strategy. So as you can see, the IDES scorecard clearly identified certain aspects that the government need to strategize and take forward. And those actions have now been taken. And they are very important tool in, in, in giving us the direction to move in that way. So thank, thank you, Sanjay. So thank you. I think thank you for the, this, I think this key part. And I think we have a lot of to learn, let's say, from Solomon Island. And I'm really looking also maybe to come back to you when we are talking about inclusion. So before- Can maybe... I ask you a question? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, for sure, yes. Yeah, uh, just that uh, very curious about like, in our experiences in Solomon Islands, the government and, and the uh, participants really insisted on taking, uh, using a lot of the local data compared to the national or the global indexes that were earlier referenced in the Ida scorecard. So what has your experience been with that? No, and I think well, thanks, thanks for that. And I think it's great. I think it's a great question also for all the different ministries and agencies from different countries. So no, we have this question, this question from various governments, I think from all the pilot countries, but also the other countries that we are working on. And really, I think we recognize, I think the lack, the lack maybe of some global data and local data to be able to co comprehensively measure and exactly measure, let's say the, the inclusion of a digital economy. So what we are really, the objective also with ISDES is really also to support the, the use of local data, high quality local data. And so when we are doing, let's say the, um, the exercise with the government in the adoption of ISDES, I think, being able to work together with the, the government, reflect about the data they're currently collecting and maybe helping them to raise the capacity or the ability to collect this data is one of our priority. So that's why also it's not just, let's say, a tool that provides data globally. It's also an exercise that we do at local level to reinforce the capacity with the government and to make sure that we are working also with the local Bureau of Statistics to be able, let's say, to have this right, let's, let's say, level of data of this missing gap. And also what we know also it's like it's an evolving tool okay and so it's it's an evolving tool it's really a rapidly evolving market and so a lot of data new data sources coming so we objective it's on a yearly base to be able to sit together and to be able to see let's say what do we have let's say the right data thank, thanks for thanks for asking this maybe what i would like to to do maybe for i would like to have let's say for both of you a question concerning let's say the inclusiveness you know, so we've been working on the first part. I would like really to focus on the inclusiveness. Et pour cela, je vais passer en français parce que je, ma deuxième question va aller à Madame la Ministre du Burkina Faso. Concernant en fait l'inclusion en fait des personnes marginalisées, donc on voit un petit peu au point de vue du Burkina Faso que en fait, comme dans beaucoup de pays, encore énormément d'espace pour pouvoir justement focaliser sur ces différents points. Je voulais voir un petit peu, en se basant sur les résultats de l'IDES, quelles ont été, quelles sont les priorités, ou bien quels sont les points sur lesquels le Burkina Faso pense qu'ils vont se focaliser dans les années prochaines, principalement pour l'inclusion en fait des personnes les plus marginalisées. Merci beaucoup. Alors déjà euh, dans mon intervention, donc je parlais de la couverture réseau des zones les plus reculées et des personnes donc euh, défavorisées. C'est vraiment de euh, faire en sorte que ces personnes ne restent pas en marge donc de l'évolution technologique. Et j'ai dit que Burkina, le Burkina Faso c'est 80% de personnes qui sont dans les zones rurales. Donc, on va dire dans les villes secondaires, et c'est des, 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 des zones euh, euh, moins nanties. Et là, il y a une grande politique à travers le fonds euh, d'accès et le service universel pour faire en sorte que ces personnes soient prises en charge parce que les opérateurs privés, eux, prioritairement, ils sont dans les zones où leur activité est rentable. Et donc, l'État intervient pour faire en sorte que ces personnes puissent aussi bénéficier donc euh, du numérique dans leur activité donc de tous les jours pour avoir accès à des services de santé pour euh, leurs activités économiques et surtout euh, vous savez que ici on utilise vraiment le mobile pour les transferts d'argent pour que eux aussi ils soient euh, pris en compte euh, c'est c'est une façon d'améliorer l'inclusion financière des personnes qui sont 
dans ces zones rurales, donc à travers l'utilisation du, du mobile. Donc, on met l'accent sur la construction d'infrastructures dans les zones où l'activité n'est pas rentable pour les opérateurs privés, faire en sorte qu'eux aussi soient pris en charge. Et je l'ai dit, dans le cadre donc, du projet Iboukina, nous faisons des plateformes adaptées à ces genres de personnes. Ensuite, nous avons un pan euh, assez important pour les personnes en situation de handicap, surtout de handicap visuel. Nous avons organisé des formations et nous les aidons à acquérir euh, du matériel adapté à leur handicap. Donc, on l'a fait déjà pour les personnes euh, handicapées visuelles et nous comptons donc étendre à d'autres handicaps. Mais pour l'instant, nous leur avons accompagné dans la formation et nous avons doté donc euh, ces personnels donc d'équipements euh, adaptés à leurs conditions de, de, de travail et faire en sorte que ces personnes qui sont dans l'administration publique eux aussi puissent contribuer au développement de, de, de leur pays. Et euh, ce que nous faisons, c'est faire en sorte que euh, la production euh, 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 de plateformes soit vraiment faite par des, des ingénieurs burkinabés. Donc, nous mettons l'accent sur euh, euh, les recrutements d'incubateurs dans les villes où il y a les universités, faire en sorte que les jeunes puissent créer des services à valeur ajoutée vraiment adaptés au, au, au monde rural. Donc, voilà un peu ce que nous faisons et nous comptons renforcer donc cette dynamique les années à venir. Un, un plus grand merci pour cette réponse. Non, et, et je suis vraiment très content aussi de voir en fait le focus sur les personnes handicapées, euh, qui est un point aussi un, un des points, un des principaux segments aussi sur lequel on se focalise. Euh, je pense qu'il y a tellement de leçons à prendre des différents pays. Je veux juste aussi vous, dans le futur, ce qu'on compte mettre en place, c'est une une community of practice entre les différents pays qui adoptent IDES pour pouvoir échanger en fait de ces bonnes pratiques parce qu'il y a tellement de bonnes pratiques dans les différents donc en fait je, je serai aussi dans le futur je serai très très content de pouvoir aussi vous avoir hein, pour pouvoir échanger en fait avec vos partenaires de différents pays je vais peut-être laisser en fait pour, pour pouvoir laisser des questions en fait à l'assemblée je vais uh, I will ask a last question to Sanjay aussi also concerning the inclusion and really the focus on gender inclusion and the gender digital divide so we see that in uh, In Solomon Island, I think the, the government has been quite strong, have done let's say, a lot of effort in order to be able to include women, let's say, much more in the digital economy. Can you just give with some of the action that have been put, what they've done and what they've put in place in order to be able to, to get this as a, as, a, as a key strength in the, let's say, the digital economy? Uh, thank you, Francois, for your question. Actually, also, there's uh, one other key highlight I wanted to make is also that the IDES tool is one of the few tools that actually takes a deep dive and trying to include the marginalized uh, and the, the key target segments that many of our governments all around the world want to target. And that is the, um, the women as a, as a focus area or dis uh, persons with disabilities or in, in some cases, migrants and all that. But in the, in the context of Solomon Islands, yeah, it, it was actually a, an eye opener in that sense, in, in, in revealing. I'll give you a context. Uh, in uh, the overall financial inclusion uh, index, if you look at for Solomon Islands is very low, but then with UNCDF when we launched a digital tool the, uh, and uh, products and services targeted to the informal sector in Solomon Islands, the participation of women was the highest, about 60%. So uh, there's a lot to do with where the government has taken very proactive steps with regards to strategies and policies that are targeted to make, ensure that women are participants in the economy, uh, both uh, uh, also targeting to bring the informal economy into a formal economy and even within the formal economy. So you will see actually within the government and in the private sector, you have women participation uh, in leadership positions too. So these are elements that have been reflected in our score uh, for the country. And that is why you are seeing uh, the kind of score that you are seeing, which is a very different from many countries. I do realize that. But within that, uh, the central bank itself, even though as a country, uh, the gender inclusiveness score is very high, the central bank itself realized that they don't have a financial include, I mean, uh, gender inclusive or gender policy within their 
uh, the, the financial inclusion strategy that they have just launched. So they are actually working together with AFI, uh, the Al Alliance for Financial Inclusion, and they have a gender policy almost developed to be implemented. So these are proactive steps that are being taken by the country to ensure that uh, the gender mainstreaming is an important agenda in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. So maybe I think, unfortunately, I have to close the discussion at, at this stage. I think there is so many other things that we could be discussing. But I'm happy that we have been able to, to I think, to focus some of the key aspects of the scorecard, policy and regulation, infrastructure, and also the inclusion part. So, Madame la Ministre, Monsieur Sanjay Shah, je veux vraiment vous remercier assez profondément, en fait, pour donner, en fait, votre perspective de IDES et comment cela vous a permis en fait, de mettre en place les bonnes priorités en fait, pour vos différents pays. Donc voilà, je, comme je dis, ce n'est que le, le début en fait, d'une aventure ensemble, parce qu'on va continuer ça pendant plusieurs années. Donc merci en fait, pour ces contributions, et j'espère vous avoir en fait, de plus en plus souvent aussi sur des panels pour pouvoir échanger en fait, votre riche expérience. Donc, euh, comme euh, ça a été mentionné aussi, euh, pour que nous avons un quatrième pays aussi qui était en fait un petit peu dans la mise en place de, de la scorecard. Nous avons aussi en fait une intervention de euh, monsieur, euh, pardon, de, de monsieur euh, le, le docteur Amina Zadebe, qui est le permanent secretary de Ministry of ICT in Uganda. Et on va aussi en fait, on va pouvoir avoir live un petit peu comment il utilise IDES et l'importance d'IDES au point de vue de l'Ouganda. Merci beaucoup. The government of Uganda's ministries, departments, and agencies were involved in reviewing the inclusive digital economy scorecard to ensure that it aligns with the national development priorities. And it was also involved in uh, identifying and collecting the right data that informs the country's digital transformation agenda. The Ministry of ICT and National Guidance has embraced this tool as an opportunity for us to track the development of a sector within the context of the digital vision of the country of 2040. IDES, or IDES as some others call it, has also provided insights and helped us as a country to identify gaps in the policy, regulation, strategy, and implementation that we need to address. The tool is particularly important for tracking progress of the implementation of the digital transformation agenda of the country, which is in line with the National Development Plan 3. Thank you all for uh, listening in. And um, sorry for this issue with the screen sharing. Um, I hope that this is now, um, I'm trying to solve that right away. Um, so. So it gives me the opportunity to also mention that please do not forget to put, it's now time for the question and answers. If you haven't put them in the Q&A section, please do. Um, so Francois and panelists, we, we've had a few questions come, uh, come our way. Um, a couple about um, uh, interesting about the countries in particular and their involvement in the development of the of the scorecard so uh, from just James Kasongo I think it's an interesting question to put forward to you I think you kind of have answered it but it's maybe a good tool that we insist again so were consultations held with the LDCs before finalizing the tool in order to ensure that it is uh, generally compatible across nations or can it be adapted in the future so maybe Sanjay and Francois, you can speak to that question. And if the minister is still with us, she can maybe confirm or mention how she was involved. Maybe I'm, I'm happy to start with, uh, let's say, giving an overview of the way it has been developed. I think uh, our executive secretary mentioned that we had a reference group, a reference group composed of GSMA, the EU, UNDP, UNCTAD, and UNDESA. And so the objective was just to make sure that we have the global standards in developing such a tool. But I think that was not enough for us. And that's why also we start, we engage with, we test it with four pilot country. And why do we call a pilot country is that when we were developing the tool, we were testing them in these four countries to get their feedback and make sure that we can incorporate that feedback in changing the tool to make sure that they bring as much value as possible for each country. 
Also, what I would like to add, it's, I was telling it's an evolving tool. And on a yearly basis, we will be updating the tools based on what? Based on the feedback from the different countries and the government of different countries. Because I think our main objective is just make sure that it's, it's a tool for the government, by the government and for the government. And it's remained, let's say, really, um, really of great added value for the digital transformation. Maybe Sanjay, I don't know if you would like to add some point that we have been really deeply involved in this process with the government of Salomon Islands. Ah, yes, uh, Francois, uh, thank you for pointing it out. Actually, in, 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 uh, that was one of the things that we were going front and back with Francois and the global IDES team. And that is why I had asked the question regarding the reference of using of local data. As an example, when everybody takes the uh, uh, World Bank uh, index, Solomon Island specifically does not exist within that. That's not measured. Uh, so then we had to provide uh, an, an element of data within that because there's a general Pacific wide data, but not specific to a country in the FINDEX of, uh, of the World Bank. That is also one of the indicators that is used within the IDES tool. So uh, that was a good experience. With regards to participation, in, in Solomon Islands, we had very extensive participation from all the concerned stakeholder ministries. So it was a very collaborative process where there was deep discussions between all the concerned institutions about exactly where they want, uh, uh, what the, exactly the situation of the country is with regards to the digital transformation, as Francois highlighted with regards to the landing of the submarine cable and uh, transferring the benefits to the citizens. So the, the experience has been very, very good in that sense. But yes, uh, the other key point being that IDES is not a, uh, one one time tool it's a constantly you have to measure it every year and i'm very happy with that the IDES team uh, is uh, evolving and refining the tool itself so it has been very very effective for the country here okay so maybe let's let's maybe move to uh, a next question about uh, training will there be training available for the scorecard maybe that's a quick one to answer i guess so, so what what we are doing? So we are so we have yes we have some training materials. We are doing presentation to different country, but again I think what is important is and again the tool I was mentioning it's really to bring the conversation at country level. So that's why I think in the website you have the contact name of all country leads, and so all country leads from UNCDF in the country in the twenty five countries are the one that say that are driving this digital transformation agenda with the um, uh, with the government. So they will be able to provide, let's say, the presentation and the training about IDES. And then we have a team, a global team about IDES that is supporting, uh, let's say, the country team in order to be able to bring this conversation at country level and make sure that we, de we develop the right capacity. And so we have been starting that in most of the country. And as we go, is evolving. So we'll be expanding also these capacities. And, and maybe I just taking another question from the uh, from Mr. Hassan Jame from the Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure of the Gambia, just to let you know that I think uh, Gambia is on the list. We are currently, let's say, working on Gambia, and so we will give you the contact of uh, our let's say country lead there is uh, Ali Akram, who is currently working on the on IDES, and so that will be involving you. Sorry, There's sorry. another question for Ghana. So the same for Ghana, you will find the contact details there. Yes, uh, for, for Ghana also we have a country lead, Ariana Gasperi, that will be able, let's say, to support at country level. And there were questions for countries that unfortunately are not yet included. So maybe you can say a few words about how we're going to expand the tool. And the questions were for two countries that are non-LDCs, Nigeria and Côte d'Ivoire. So maybe can you mention a few words about, um, about the expansion of the tool and how we're going to manage that? Yeah. So I think that's what I say. When, 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 when this, we start the development of IDES, I think that's true. Our objective was to focus on first on the country where UNCDF is present, but more and more we are working with partner institutions, like for example, UNDP, to be able to expand, let's say, beyond that. So we are currently working on Namibia, that is not LDC. We have also Malaysia, that is non LDC, and that is currently, let's say, also in the tool. So objective is really based 
we will we'll see, I think, based on the request that we'll have with the different countries, we'll try to support as much as we can the expansion. But our objective is really to turn this tool maybe is in a global tool where every year, let's say, we have more and more in country. But as, as we say, we just want just to be, let's say, a website with figures. We just want to make sure so that at country level, we have the right buying from the government to make sure that the, I think the tool is used in order really to, I think, to drive an inclusive digital economy in these, these countries. So you will see in the website, there is my contact details and the contact details of the team at country. So please don't hesitate to send us email about the request from different countries and so we will reply to you on our, what is the best way to go forward. So yes, I confirm that the, the platform is live and is available publicly. So all the data is available publicly. There's a question about going more granular. Maybe that's the last question maybe we can answer. I mean, how far um, and how deep are the data provided and how? So for, so for the moment, so we have in the methodology, you have the list of the different indicators on the website. So we have decided to keep it at a higher level. But as I say, I think the really objective is to bring the discussion at country level. So if we have, let's say, if you are interested in one country because you are a key player in digital transformation, we would like to be involved in this country in the digital transformation. So please contact the country lead that is at the bottom of each page. You will have the contact. You can send an email. And from there, you can start engaging the conversation. And let's say sharing, you will be able to, to get, let's say, more data. And we did start to discussing about, let's say, the synergy we can have together with all, I think, the different stakeholders and the agencies in order to drive this, this digital transformation. Thank you, Francois. So in the interest of time, as we have time this session to be, even though we have a lot of more questions, so what we will do is we'll do our best to answer these questions by emails. Um, if we haven't already answered them through um, the responses that were provided in the presentation during this session. So now with this, with no further ado, I would like to hand the floor to our Director of Inclusive Digital Economies at UNCDF, uh, Henri Demel, for his closing remarks. Henri, over to you. Thank you, Karen Marie. And can you, can you hear me and see me? Yes. Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time again to attend this important session. And I wish to extend a special thanks to our uh, UNDP Administrator and our Executive Secretary for opening this session. I also wish to thank the Minister of Digital Economy of Burkina Faso, Madame Wata Hassano, and Mr. Sanjay Shah, Digital Advisor of the Government of Solomon Island, for a very interesting and fascinating discussion with my colleague Francois Coupien on the application of the Inclusive Digital Economy Scorecard in their respective countries. So as we heard from government's counterparts, EDES is an important and a valuable tool to poli for policymakers and a po po powerful guide to help them navigate the rapid digital transformation of their economy. And most importantly, to ensure this transformation is inclusive of marginalized population, especially women. As Akim Steiner rightly underlined in his introduction, the digital divide is a new face of inequality. And in that context, the EDES can help countries identify key market constraints and set priorities for an inclusive digital transformation of their economy. So, you know, with that in mind, the next question that one might have after reviewing the score of a given country and identifying the key constraints is how to overcome them. In order to help address such question, I would like to share with you that we have put together a publication entitled Digital Inclusive Economies for the SDGs. It was released earlier this year on the side of the High Level Political Forum. And this publication combined insight based on UNCDF experience, along with expert contribution from over a dozen organizations on the future of digital economies. The objective of this publication is to offer a practical guide that you can use when looking for ideas on how to drive an inclusive digital transformation in your country, in your organization, or globally. It's a resource that you can consult on a flexible and regular basis. For example, if you are looking for ideas about the best ways to leverage technology in agriculture, energy, finance, education, to name a few sector. Or if you intend to leverage technology to improve the lives of women, migrants, youth, MSMEs. Each of the segments and sector are covered in a separate article in that publication. 
inclusive digital economies for the SDGs. So, I mean, in short, I wanted to say that this publication, you know, has 22 articles and organized in four main sections. I will mention them very briefly. The section one introduced how the growth of digital finance has really contributed to the emergence of digital economies and what is our overall approach and strategy as Lens CDF in that regard. The section two focused on what it will take to leave no one behind with a focus on policy and the EDES tool that we just presented, you just heard about today. Section three looks at where to focus to fast track the SDGs and leverage digital innovation in that respect. And finally, uh, section four look at the model and approach to finance inclusive digital economies and leverage the revolution of digital finance to find new innovative ways to finance uh, those digital transformation. So, I mean, just as you can see, this publication is available in the digital format and downloadable on uh, as PDF on our UNCDF website. So you, you will have the uh, um, detail of that from my colleague Karima, and it will soon be available in French as well. I wanted to share that and please stay tuned on our uh, social media accounts so that you know, we know when that, uh, that uh, French version will be available. So as a conclusion, I really wanted to thank you for your uh, participation and attendance to that session. And of course, all our panelists for what has been a fascinating discussion. And as Francois mentioned in the beginning of the journey that we will take together with all of our partners countries to really help them uh, support the uh, transformation of their uh, economies uh, leveraging the digital revolution. Thank you very much. Back to you, Karima. Thank you, Henri. Thank you very much. And with that, I propose that we close this session. Um, we have already shared in the chat the, the link and the URL address to the, to the EDES, to the online scorecard and the interactive map. Um, it's, it's a split new website uh, that delivers you know, a snapshot and the details of, of each country. You can also access the methodology and uh, an explanation about the market development stages. So please go and visit the website. You will also, as was mentioned by Francois and Sanjay, you will also find the contact for each of the countries that have been um, now currently included in the scorecard. For other countries, when you do not find uh, the country name that you're looking for, please contact uh, the global leads of the scorecard and they can best orient you. So with that, I would like to close our session and thank you all again for your time and um, hope that you uh, will really find the scorecard as interesting as we have discovered it to be for uh, working with our government counterparts. Thank you very much and have a nice day. <laughs>